What concerns the marine energies, all the countries are trying to develop new technologies. Three technologies dominate the market, the thermic energy of the seas that tries to exploit the difference between the sea surface temperature and the sea ground temperature, the energy of the sea currents, same principle as the one of the wind turbine energy but we try here to exploit the subsea currents with propellers placed in the sea. Finally, the energy of the waves. Nowadays, the energy of the waves is the most promising one because the frequency of the waves, tidals and swell is almost ubiquitous and wider spread than the one of the subsea currents. There are currently five operating systems of wave energy. In first position, we have the currently most known system, the Pelamis system. It's an attenuator, a sea snake, whose segments make one half wavelengths of swell in between. It means that this system presents some disadvantages. In case of weak swell, it's going to push little seawater under pressure before it is sent to the electrical water turbine and then very little efficiency and profitability. However, the big problem of all these systems which try to exploit the energy of the waves is that we need two conversions, the compression of a fluid and then the turbination of this pressurized fluid. So we only get an efficiency percentage of an efficiency percentage. An efficiency loss during the fluid compression followed by an efficiency loss during the turbination. Thus, two transformations or two alterations, the efficiency of an efficiency. In second position, we have the so-called absorber systems. These are some sorts of buoys attached and connected to the sea ground by means of two systems. One that reacts with the sea, surface level and the offer which is fixed to the sea ground. Thus, again, we have a compression of a fluid, air, water or oil, or eventually some linear engines, but in all cases, they have a big disadvantages. They are immersed systems. Moreover, lack of reliability and very expensive maintenance and service costs. Furthermore, they are sensitive to tides. During the high tides, they will not oscillate the same way, and we end up with, again, the same problem, the compression of a fluid and then the turbination of it. Again, two transformations or two alterations, the efficiency of an efficiency. In third position, we have the systems with column of oscillating water, that is to say, with a bell. The swell is going to pass into this bell. It's going to compress the air towards the obliged stopping off place, the electric turbine. Thus, we are going to make turn the turbine, and then when the swell comes back down again, the stream of the turbination is going to be reversed and the turbine will turn again. We find almost the same disadvantages. This system is little sensitive to the low swell. It's sensitive to the tides. It compresses a fruit, then turbinates this fruit. Again, two transformations, the efficiency of an efficiency. Next come the, comes the oscillator systems. The most known is the oyster, currently in experimentation. These are systems which exploit the breakers or beach combers also calling breaking waves. When the swell touches the sea ground, the wave breaks and produces a current by activating the piston of the oscillator. Next, when the wave withdraws, the oscillator gets activated again the other way around while the fluid gets turbinated again. Exploitation of the breaking waves. Here again, immersed systems meaning fiability problems and high maintenance cost. Moreover, it is fixed on the sea ground, thus in little efficiency in high tide periods, because in these periods, the breaking waves are not occurring at the same place, that is to say where the system is located. And again, compression of a fluid, then turbination of it. Efficiency of an efficiency. All then we have the systems with ramps. We are going to make rise the swell on a ramp, whether it is fixed to the sea coast, seashore, or fixed in sea on the sea ground. The disadvantage is that we are going to lose all the energy of the ascent of the ramp. We are going to only transform the crest or peaks of the swell, which will then be turbinated. The most known of these systems is the wave dragon system. In conclusion, the ideal would be to find a system which is not immersed for an absolute reli reliability, insensitive to the tides, and if possible using a single unique transformation for maximal efficiency profitability that the system can, in a single operation, produce a continuous rotary movement from the swell. It has to be simple. It has ideally to be self-optimizing, of a low construction cost and of easy low-cost maintenance. As I have just explained it to you right now, we always have two transformations. We compress a fluid for filter turbination. We always get the efficiency of an efficiency for an average low global efficiency. 
Here I realized a swell in polyester to make you an educational demonstration of my system which is going to immediately generate a continuous rotary movement from the swell. We have no intermediate phase. We are immediately generating a continuous rotary movement from the swell. This system is very simple. All the current systems are in ascent and descent or ups and downs, that is to say always in two dimensions. Here our system adds a third dimension. There is ascent and descent or ups and downs, two dimensions, this is the pitching of a platform. Plus the third dimension which is the rolling. So we get a structure mix of pitching and rolling, the system is going to self-synchronize with continuous imbalance. That is to say we are going to make a mass turning. By mixing pitching and rolling, how do we get this? It is quite simple. We built a platform based on three floats. Here I materialized the floats by rollers. We have two pitching floats in yellow and one rolling float in red. When a pitching float is in a hollow wave, the other pitching float is on a wave crest and vice versa. When the two pitching floats are sitting astride or riding a wave crest, the rolling float is in a crest wave, initiating a start port side movement. When the two pitching floats are sitting astride or riding a hollow wave, the rolling float is in a hollow wave, initiating a port side movement. You will notice that the platform is going to constantly, continuously and permanently pitch and roll. Now I'm making the demonstration expressively on a small swell to show you the efficiency of the system. Consequently, if this is already working very well with a small swell, this will work even better with a big swell because we will have no more slope. Now I'm going to set up the mass steering wheel on the platform and you will notice that it's working very, very well. Now I'm going to position the system on the swell by positioning the two pitching floats aligned in the stream of the swell. The rolling float is going to induce the port side, starboard side rolling of the platform and you will notice that even in presence of a small swell it works very well. I voluntarily use a small swell to demonstrate the efficiency of the system even in presence of a small swell. Consequently, in presence of a big swell, it will work even better because we will have more slope on the pitching and rolling levels, thus more induced torque. You will notice that as long as we move ahead towards the swell, the mass steering wheel turns the position itself on the side of the lower float. We can move back in the opposite direction. You will notice that the mass steering wheel is turning the opposite direction as well. We could get the visual impression that the mass steering wheel is not turning in a regular manner. This is not the case. The visual impression is due to the fact that the mass steering wheel is not slowed down by an electric generator. The mass steering wheel is rotating so quick at moments that it is leading on the swell, thus it's not anymore in phase or synchronized with the swell and slows down. In real conditions, let's do it in slow motion. When the mass steering wheel sits astride or rides a wave crest, the mass steering wheel sits astride or rides the wave crest. And when it will have made a complete tour, it will be positioned again on the next wave crest. You see, here, it has taken some lead, then it sets off its leading advance, we have made a complete tour. In conclusion, this system rotates at the same frequency as the swell's frequency. What you need to understand on a real sea swell scale, this mass steering wheel will have a 25 meter radius, thus a lever arm of 25 meters, long driven by a mass of 1000 tons or more. As a consequence, the deliberate torque is huge. The system develops a couple more powerful than 10 gathers of shore wind turbine, while being much cheaper. Why is it much cheaper? because the mass steering wheel can be made in the form of a lost seal shuttering in which we position perforated braces or crossbars. Then we insert concrete steel bar irons into the perforation and we cast concrete in this then we close. As a consequence the mass steering wheel is not going to be very expensive and the structure is reduced to its most simple expression. Then we put a dome on the mechanical set which will be pressurized. The internal air will be deshydrated and pressurized in a way to obtain an inside pressure higher than the outside pressure, preventing the outside sea air to penetrate into the dome. To penetrate inside the dome there will be a small decompression chamber, very simply. 
Conclusion, the system is inexpensive, is inexpensive to build. It requires very little civil engineering since there is no foundation to build. It is just held by cables connected to buoys themselves connected to dead bodies. This system optimizes itself. How is that possible? When the mass steering wheel passes over a float, it imposes this to this float to take more capacity to charge into the sea's water surface. Then it is to say that the float is going to go deeper into the sea water. On the other side, the opposite float is liberated from the weight of the mass steering wheel. That is to say that it's going to come up to the sea water surface or even above its level. As a consequence, if we are in presence of a swell of 1.5 meter amplitude, it will be possible to make the platform oscillate on 2.5 meters or more. It will depend on the form, shape, lines of the floats and of their filling rates. If the floats have few breaths and are of high height, they will go deeper into the sea water and will come up to the sea water much more. Advantages of the system. First, it generates immediately a continuously rotating movement with the swell. Secondly, it optimizes itself. Third, it is possible to fasten several platforms together to create wave and tidal power system farms. Equal power. A wave and tidal power system farm is impacting 10 times less the sea and subsea environment than an offshore wind turbine farm of same power. Each wave and tidal power system develops at least 10 times the power generated by the most powerful offshore wind turbine and up to 20 times its annual electricity production. What concerns maintenance and service, it's much easier to access the facility. No need to access blade rollings at 100 meters altitude like it is the case with offshore wind turbines. The whole facility is just above the sea water surface level. It, in the worst scenario, for example, it, in presence of an extreme storm of hurricane, it if needed, we can tow one or several wave and tidal power systems back to the shore with no delay in a technical port protected from the potentially dangerous swell. It's very easy, just putting the floating platform out of the trim and throwing them back to the shore. In summary, far less expensive maintenance and service costs. Far less sea and subsea space needed for implementation. Civil engineering cost at its minimum. The lowest technology available megawatt hour cost known as the date of today. Consequently, the return on investment is very short for a no risk technology. This is the system, itself speaking, self evident of simplicity. There, I stop it. We start again. As you see, there again, it's taking a leading advance. It comes back. I can make an attempt with a smaller mass steering wheel to show you. I made a smaller mass steering wheel to show you that even with a smaller steering wheel, this works very well. We are going to make it pass on the simulated swell by moving it. If we go back in the opposite direction, it turns in the opposite rotation. Advantages of the system It's a floating system. It is insensitive to the tidal range of the tides, called tidal amplitude. It's a surface system. It retrieves the wave and tidal swell on the surface, where kinetic energy of the waves is the most important. It's not an immersed system, guarantee for maximal reliability and for a low-cost maintenance. It directly transforms in one sole unique operation the kinetic energy of the waves and tidal into a continuous rotative motion without going into intermediate phases such as the compression of a fluid and turbinating of it. Its yield is maximum and unique compared to the existing and experimental wave and tidal systems. It is currently the only system which allows this conversion into a single operation it is also the only and unique system which optimizes the wave and tidal amplitude. It oscillates on a wave amplitude greater by 30 to 100 percent than the wave and tidal amplitude themselves. It requires a minimal civil engineering infrastructure maintained by mooring buoys connected to dead bodies. All the structure in contact with the sea and the spray can be made of polyester an unalterable composite or stainless steel. It undergoes no corrosion. 
All mechanical parts and the electricity generator are isolated in a waterproof pressurized case to protect them from the salted sea water and sea sprays. No corrosion, no penetration of salted sea water or sea sprays because of the low pressurization inside the electricity generator box. The mechanics for converting the kinetic energy of the waves and tidals into a continuous rotary motion is very simple. It is highly reliable and requires minimal maintenance and service. The unit is inexpensive to industrialize. The unit is very easy to set up in terms of civil engineering works. The power of each unit is 10 times the power generated by the most powerful offshore wind turbine. As the mechanism develops a considerable torque in a continuous way, several units can be secured together to form wave and tidal power system farms. A wave and tidal power system farm as equal power occupy 100 times less surface than an offshore wind farm of same power. The implementation cost civil engineering works of wave and tidal power system farm is 100 times lower than the one of an equal power offshore wind farm. Located on the surface with a very low height, this wave and tidal system farm have no impact on the environment. They can be towed to the coast if needed and for whatever the reason within a few hours at any time. The entire equipment is totally recyclable at the end of life. There is a very high probability that this wave and tidal power system meets the general consensus from all the existing wave and tidal power system manufacturers in the same way that the three-bladed propeller was imposed in the wind industry. This system will provide the global leadership to its manufacturers in the field of recovery of wave energy.